Hey, how's everybody doing? I'm Tom Lynch Nyback. This is day 334, 365 days towards racial change. I hope you're all doing well. <clears throat> We're here talking about black, being black in America. You know, we talk a lot about being white in America as well. And we'll find all kinds of other people in between, but those two poles are very important to, to recognize, to acknowledge in what America means, uh, how America came to be, you know, how, how America is um, the most or one of the most powerful nations on the earth and how it got in that position through exploiting labor, uh, through mostly white men manipulating the system, you know, uh, white men that became uh, the very thing that they hated, the very thing they ran from, that they the thing which those colonists uh, back um, around the time of the revolution, you know, they, they, the chains that they broke, they put them back together on another people. Um, so, so that's what we're talking about here and how that has progressed, become modernized, you know, you got to, uh, unless you are a being watching this that can live forever, um, you might, um, you know, someone that can live forever might not appreciate this, but for us who are here for this moment in time, right, um, I, I didn't make, think I'd live this long. I'm over 50 years old. And I'm like, well, you know, I've, I know I made a lot of dumb decisions based on whatever, but I never included living this long <laughs> in all of my deliberations and the decisions I've made. I'm making, the, I'm making better decisions reflecting on that. What, what, what a point, uh, bottom line is, that we're here for this moment, and whether we're black, white, brown, yellow, red, you know, we're here for these 50, you know, average, you know, 50, 60, 70 years on the planet. And so much, if we're in America, so much goes into the color I am and how that came to be. And that's important. It's an important part of discussion. So much of life. Now that I've kind of matured a little bit, stayed off drugs and alcohol for a little while, I realize how much, how much the important things that we don't talk about, the, the things that if, if we um, spoke to our children about, would be so much different. Life would be so much different, right? You know, and I'm not talking about stealing a childhood. I'm not talking about my understanding of, say, the Middle East, where they teach children this kind of hate the world and we're against the world type thing. Um, if that's the correct information I'm getting. I'm starting to become skeptical of what my government is telling me about the rest of the world. But I have, and where I'm at, I have no way of knowing unless I go places and things like that. But we're here for this little bit of time and whether we're born white, born black or whatever, how where we're born, you know, it's, it's, it determines so much 
of how we're going to be, what's going to happen in our life, the course of our events, how the community will perceive us, you know, the opportunities we have, the um, the kind of challenges that we face, right? And that goes uh, even sex, you know, born man or woman, and then you navigate sexual identity on top of that. Then there's social classes. It's just a it's a big mess of what humans have done to themselves. It's interesting. I've been ex, uh, introduced to existentialism and uh, fascinating topic. Maybe if I do another uh, year long or 365 day series, I, you know, I might take a stab at it. Some some pretty heavy stuff. Um, but but it, it explains a lot. Philosophy, right? But uh, don't give me, don't let me get off track with that. Um, right now, we're just finishing up trying to get 30 more or so of these out of the way. And uh, I'm going to get, I got to start making some money. <laughs> yeah, I've been, um, the universe opened this little two year window, and it's not the first time. But it's the first time I've done my best with it. And uh, I'm going to keep that momentum going. Get, knock out 30 more episodes and uh, go on to the next thing. So, you know, um, talking about race in America, it's very relevant. Don't think it's going anywhere. Um, you know, in my research lately, as I've kind of starting to wrap up this project, I'm seeing some, I don't know, some movement, some growth. Um, so a couple things have happened to racism that we're seeing, I think I'm seeing uh, racism diminish a little bit. It's, it's, it's it's gotten shaken a little bit. Part of it's the coronavirus scene, right? We knew racism was why uh, black people, we'll just focus on black. I know everybody shares to some degree, but black people disproportionately are exposed to um, America's dysfunction. Right, so uh, fortunately, I mean, it's always been there, been like that. We see it in the workplace. Um, I've got my plenty of discrimination stories I could rant about. But now with the virus, you see the, 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 the communities that did not have access to proper health care and, and stuff like that because of a socioeconomic issue that community is more susceptible to the ravages of the coronavirus. Now, I saw today on CNN, today is um, today's the 17th of May, um, a healthcare expert czar or somebody like that, you know, trying to move the breeze, the disparagement um, uh, in the impact of the coronavirus towards, oh, you know, the communities um, mentioning things like obesity, um, environment a little bit. The, the idea he he was not and what America wants to move the dis, health disparities. Um, the reasons for the health disparities towards health issues. They keep making it a health issue, but the root is socioeconomics, right? People, you know, living in inner cities and uh, exposed to 
uh, and, and incredible amounts of stress and things like that aren't going to have a whole lot of, um, you know, health. It's not a healthy environment, right? But the power group, mostly white folks living in suburbs, yards, trees, clean air, uh, consistently clean water, uh, proper sanitation and things like that. Hmm. Yeah, it's going to do a little better, a little fair, a little better in America. You know, um, they got space. Um, they're, they're not hearing um, ambulances and sirens and police activity, you know, all day long in their space. You know? Even if they have to c come to a, a place where there's a high stress level, they can still, they drive home. They have cars, right? They're not on public transportation being exposed to all kinds of, you know, numerous uh, infections and possibilities like that. You know, so, you know, if you get one, th well, I want you to get a lot of things out of this video series as I'm about to wrap up. Today, I want to stress, I'll try to focus. Today, I want to stress like, the coronavirus impacting black communities is um, disproportionately is a socioeconomic issue. First, that's the roots of it. They, um, us, we, who are exposed and most susceptible are in that um, condition because we don't have the same environment, that, that kind of environment that the privileged have, they cost money. You know, you got to be handling, you know, your handle to sustain in those kind of environments. All right, so um, I really, it really burns me up when I see uh, experts and professionals trying to put the root of the cause, you know, something I learned in, um, in my uh, philosophy studies is a great word. I uh, was pretty much um, uh, apparent in all my courses uh, this semester. And there's this thing about reducibility, you know, how do you, how do things reduce? Because scientists want to reduce things to their elemental parts, and then we can see how things work together. Well, for the professional healthcare community and experts, men and women, to come on to um, the television and say that the reason uh, black people are minority communities are more susceptible is because of obesity and um, uh, environment and things like that. Well, th well, that's like saying, you know, the reason why this pencil writes uh, or the reason why I have a writing instrument in my hand is because it's a pencil. Well, a philosopher is going to say, well, let's really reduce this. You know, it's not just the reason I write is because I have a pencil. The reason I write is because there's lead, there's wood. We break it down into its component parts. There's an eraser, right? There's a metal band holding the eraser and all that. And then we can even go further and talk about how it was produced. Right, that that's the reducibility of the object. Well, when you when you talk about health disparities for Black people, the problem is not we eat too much and whatnot. Right? Uh, there's underlying problems. There's stress. There's mental components in our environment and when we need to talk about the socioeconomic issues driving a lot of that stuff.
Um, I'm, not, I'm adamant about that. It's not because it's not a, obesity. Those are contributing factors after the fact, right? I watch a lot of crime shows. They say you are you are a, you are a witness or you're culpable after the fact. You're you're involved. And we're going to throw you in jail after the fact, right? The fact is uh, you knew something about a murder or you had information and stuff like that and you did not come forward, right? You didn't pull the trigger, you didn't stab a knife or anything, but you're an accessory after the fact. That's what they're talking about when they talk about obesity and all this crazy stuff that contributes to being vulnerable to the coronavirus. Try to get, try to understand that, right? The, the fact is, People are poor. We don't have money. We, you know, it's tough to uh, leave work to have take care of health care. You know, it's the, uh, it's the socioeconomic roots. All this obesity, and you know, that's after the fact. <laughs> I'm inspired to do this work by a man named Dr. Claude Anderson. You can find him here on YouTube, and I'll show you some other resources. We're going to be going getting into his material next few days the first book i read of his get this book at least if you didn't get don't get any um i think i'm trying to maybe i'll figure out how to put some links in the description so people have access with a through clicking stuff anyway black history reader 101 questions you never thought to ask black labor white wealth search for power and economic justice and dr anderson's national plan to empower Black America. Poweronomics, you can find Dr. Anderson at poweronomics.com here on YouTube. He's easy to find. Behind me, you should hashtag us two symbol. You'll find Black women having a conversation, supporting one another with their issues. Check out Black Enough, B L A G G E N U F, Black Facebook kind of experience. If you can't find your flavor here on the World Wide Web, do what I did. Start your own. A uh, little video thing. Um, Google seems to have an infinite space for this, these monologues. So I'm just going to wear it out as best I can. Oh, uh, if you can, uh, these are economic times, economic times and opportunities. Uh, check out this book to get an idea. It's a long book, it's, it's but it's a good read. G. Edward Griffin's The Creature from Jekyll Island. Read this book, definitely. Uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin, Harriet Beecher Stowe, fictional account of slave life in America, informed by real events. Um, if you got a business mind, if you're an entrepreneur, go check out the Black Business School, uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins, theblackbusinessschool.com. Uh, there's Tyrone Gregory, um, self-employed tax guy, real good guy. I've talked to him on the phone and uh, see if he maybe has some resources to get you on your feet. Um, I'll be talking in the next couple of days about, uh, plus today, uh, but about economics and um, some, some parts of that related to racism in America. Okay, here we go. Today we are in Poweronomics, uh, Dr. Anderson's National Plan to Empower Black America, and uh, we're at page 156. And we're talking about, um, and this kind of, we've been kind of in this um, mindset for a couple days, and this is it's important speaking socioeconomically. And um, I wanted to insert this in our last meeting. Uh, Dr. Anderson has this nice little four part cycle to, uh, to wealth creation and uh, stages that, that, a, uh, uh, that a, uh, a nation or a people uh, things, uh, little, nice little cycle people go through <clears throat> uh, that's pretty consistent, 
uh, through life. I think we go through it personally. Uh, we see it nationally. It's we see it historically. And uh, his this little four part model he has talks about it uh, in relation to slavery and racism. And we I've talked about this before, so I dug it up and. Uh, it begins in our natural resources stage. We can see that in America where um, uh, Europe found, discovered all the free labor out of Africa, free land in the Americas, and they exploited that. And uh, that gets into the, uh, the labor stage. They got to extract those resources. That's uh, stage number two. Number three, the third stage is our industrialization, uh, labor saving techniques and all that. Uh, Eli Whitney's cotton gin, uh, any industrial revolution you can think about here in America's, uh, especially up in the northern colonies, uh, process these things. You know, initially the colonies, um, England had to had its little kind of stamp act where all the resources gathered in the colonies had to be shipped to um, England or Europe, be processed, and then it came back to America. A uh, very gangster, you know, <laughs> very mafioso type business, uh, which really kicked off the revolution and everything. But uh, you know, after that, you get labor-saving devices as the nation does its processing in-house. And then uh, that's the third stage. Fourth stage is your information stage where you're just handling the process, managing uh, a very firm and uh, process that's in place economically and working for you well. Now, uh, we've got black people actually have a better opportunity at uh, this. You know, this is not Dr. Anderson's fault. Uh, he's kind of an older guy. We're coming out of a book that's now six years old. Uh, the Internet technology ha has just um, has had an gr impact on gr uh, the growth of anything exponentially. So it's got away from him. So we're not looking to get blacks involved with the hands-on labor-wise. You know, our numbers are down. And, you know, and since I've started this project, a lot of things have changed. There's a uh, his Hispanic crew roofing this uh, building I live in, right? And it's all Hispanic. I was looking, I'm looking for work right now. And uh, more of the jobs are making stronger hints at being bilingual, right? The language, um, Spanish and English, it, they're going through. It's going to take a long time, but if they're really morphing together more and more. I, I took my little Spanish for college reasons, but you know I'm glad I did. I'll, I'll probably get back to it. But the labor, um, the skilled labor, that that good paid labor, um, it's really it's really gotten away from black folks, and um, we have this opportunity now to really participate more in the technology sector. Um, we're fortunate that the um, the internet's made it's. It's resisted racism because, you know, I could do these things. I could actually have just, um, you know, pictures and images floating by you and stuff. You don't need to see my face for this to really work, right? So the Internet has it's given, given some layers where, um, you know, who you are if you're an oppressed part of an oppressed, marginalized group, well, you can just go incognito. And you, know, you don't even have to have your voice, your face, anything anymore. 
So, you know, I don't think Dr. Anderson saw the power of that. He, I, he, he would give us a different message uh, today, I think, based on uh, what technology has given us, you know. And what I, you know, some years from now, if this videos are still around, what I'm talking about today is going to be obsolete. So it, it's not a it's, it's not a pejorative negative um, attack on anyone's contribution. It's just that's that's what technology has done. It's it's really put us. Um, it, it speeds things up and, and it makes things obsolete. That's what it's supposed to do anyway. Um, so today, you know, and, and I've been dabbling in this too as I'm looking for work. You know, I made some money online with zero investment, right? Because uh, because I can write. And uh, so I've, I've written a little bit, get a little bit, so, you know, but, I, but now I'm toying with doing it seriously, professionally. Uh, upping my game, putting more time in and stuff like that. I have that opportunity and um, my race, age um, is less of a factor because of that. So that that's, and I, what I'm stressing is our technology cycle. We're in a technology. And so everybody's got a more equal chance at snatching up wealth and it's global and it's you know we're not so much confined within america's borders right i you know for industrialization i i don't see black people i don't know getting into building buildings cars roads uh, handling some of what's going on, right? I, I see. I could see black people being managers, of owning. You know, if we can get into land ownership and outsource these things, that I think that's a better model. I think that's might be what is happening for black people with some brains uh, nowadays. Um, but for us, you know, who want to maybe be a little more independent, our industrialization is more, much more technological. It's here on the laptop and our computer screens. Our, if, you, if you're part of the privileged class, maybe you have a big screen TV that you're doing your computer work on. I know some of you are. And... Uh, so our, our commerce, the way we make money now is something called through collision, collisions. Um, and it's just like you think about, you ever been in a car accident? I've been in two, or I've been hit by a car and, uh, and I was in a real good car accident years ago. And you want the thing with commerce is you, you really want the same idea. You want a collision. You want that the, the person with money and need to, to, to come in contact with the person with those resources and um, uh, ability to serve and fill that need. You want a collision. I learned that in, um, in, in college. Um, I took some music business, you know, two guys, uh, uh, Chris Daniels of Chris Daniels and the Kings. And a guy named Storm Bloor, you know, they talked about the music business and you want to cause this collision to happen where um, that need meets that resource, right? And it can be anything. You, you think of something off the top of your head, something crazy like um, you want to sell blueberry bu bullets in... Um, in uh, Italy, outside of the uh, Vatican City or something, 
there's somebody in the world on the planet that needs blueberry bullets outside the Vatican. Trust me. Try it. Advertise, but have the product. Advertise blueberry bullets, and somebody's going <laughs> to <laughs> going to be coming to you saying, yeah, well, you know, how much? Well, that's the idea. So that that's our black industrialization is here on the computer making things happen. Yeah, so we might be too late for that the labor class. Our numbers, our numbers just aren't there and we're not effective. Remember, even... Of all the talk, we're still incarcerated. We're not. We don't do well. We're not doing well economically, and stuff like that. I'm seeing more participation, but still in the entertainment. You know, black people are more better than we got more than entertainment going on. We've got thinkers, healthcare, politicians. You know, we're not just entertainers. But my goodness. Is that all the black people were put on the earth to do, make you laugh? Anyway, read the description. It's a little more detailed of uh, today's post. And, um, and, you know, think about positioning yourself. You know, I think white people are light years ahead. They're always ahead because they kind of, lead the way and position themselves to do that you know my, my one of my big dreams is that black people would get around that get in front of something and be just as noted for um being control of a of a, of a resource or service other than entertainment you know i say other than entertainment because White folks are on top of that, too, running that. Listen, don't let me uh, rant. I'm over time. I don't like to do that. Um, my name is Tom Lins Nyback. Day 334 in the can of 365 days towards racial change. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.